Well, I'd like to share an article with you today, um, or parts of an article, um, written, uh, in the, written up in the uh, German magazine uh, Der Spiegel. And um, uh, I will post a link to the entire article. And um, it's, uh, it's definitely worthwhile a read if you have the time. Um, it's, it's kind of lengthy, probably, you know, I printed it out, it's about three pages. Uh, I want to say up front, of course, that Germany has its own bias uh, towards um, the uh, uh, government of Israel uh, due to their unique relationship uh, after the Holocaust. And so um, uh, this article, uh, nevertheless, is worthwhile uh, a read. And so I will start right off here <coughs> by, uh, by quoting. The Israelis have shut the world press out of the Gaza Strip, forcing journalists to rely on the Arab media and informants on the ground. The situation is making objective reporting in the war close to impossible. Danny Seaman stands on a low hill in southern Israel. His legs are set wide, his whole face is beaming. Whatever he is looking at is clearly filling him with satisfaction. While a crowd of journalists scurries around the hill, television cameras stand at the ready, and the logos of major television stations and channels glint from satellite dishes atop broadcast vans. The area is swarming with photographers who sit and wait like paparazzi outside the celebrity villa, except that the situation here isn't quite so glamorous. With little to see, the general mood is one of annoyance. And that's exactly how Seaman likes it. After all, he doesn't like these foreign observers very much. Seaman is the director of Israeli's government press office. The Israeli government has barred all media coverage from the Gaza Strip, which has forced correspondents from around the world to take up positions here, one kilometer back from the border. In the distance, they can make out the silhouette of Gaza City, and they can see the smoke that rises after each airstrike, too. At the moment, this hill provides the best view of the war available, and it's the Israeli view. The journalists are close enough to film the impact of Israeli bombs, but too far away to see the Palestinian casualties. I'm happy that you're here, says Seaman with barely concealed scorn as he greets the assembled journalists. In front of him stands CNN's star reporter, Christiana Amanpour, and next to her are her colleagues from the BBC and two a dozen other television stations. Then Seaman lets everyone know what he expects from them. You're here and you're covering our side. This means that even two weeks into Israeli's occupation, uh, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Operation <coughs> Cast Lead against the Palestinian organization Hamas, no independent reporter is being allowed into Gaza. Seaman has no qualms about making it clear that Israel wants to keep the international media out of the Gaza Strip. The reason is that the foreign press is biased unprofessional and falls too easily for the other side's propaganda. His definition of professional, it would seem, is only putting out Israel's version of the war. The fact that this is happening in Israel, of all places, is surprising, this article states. Israel prides itself on being the only democracy in the Middle East and for having always emphasized freedom of the press. The Israeli Supreme Court 
um, actually directed the Israeli government to let the international press cover this conflict, but of course to no avail. This uh, article goes on to say a little bit later, the era in which journalists enjoyed almost unfettered access to combat op operations has been over since the Vietnam War. By delivering horrific combat images straight into American living rooms, journalists in Vietnam helped spark the anti-war movement back home. And since then, the world has seen only the aspects of U.S. military operation that the Pentagon wants it to see. In the 1991 Gulf War, for example, was a war presented by censors, a war without victims, blood or suffering. Many correspondents covering the conflict sat in hotel rooms for months in Dharan, Saudi Arabia, without ever hearing a single shot. Meanwhile, the television screens back home ran antiseptic pictures of airstrikes, images that looked more like you'd see on a computer game rather than uh, the death of a human being. Likewise, in 2001, the first rockets struck outside Kabul. The only pictures made available came from an Afghan night vision camera stationed 60 kilometers away. In the war that followed in Iraq, the journalists who were embedded among American troops were only allowed to witness the war accompanied by the military and were subject to its authority. Israel's rigid media policy grows out of bitter experience, this article says. In the 2006 war in Lebanon, members of the international media primarily reported from the Lebanese side. Although global public sentiment had initially sympathized with Israel's reaction to the Hezbollah attacks, these journalists' images of civilian casualties tipped sympathies towards Hezbollah. And when Israeli soldiers gave journalists telephone, telephone reports from the front, the news was soon full of stories about the victims. After the war, the Israeli press was sanctions, sanctions for its critical stance. General, the generals were outraged and many citizens simply saw journalists as traitors. So this is what it's come to, folks. People who are reporting the truth are traitors. This uh, is, a, is a long article and it's really worth, uh, worth your read because it has a lot to say. Thanks for listening.